Wouldn't it be nice if every website made it easy to get data and use it in our application? Perhaps a really clear and well-documented API that we could use to get the information that we wanted. Unfortunately, that's not always possible and we have to resort to use web scraping. Hi, welcome to the Do Learning Tunnel. This is where we do to learn and learn by doing. In this video, we're going to be using Node.js to scrape a website. This is where we have Node request some data, parse that data to find the information that we want, and then persist that information in a form that we can use it later on. We're gonna be using a website set up specifically for the purposes of scraping. It's worth noting that we should be careful when we're extracting data. It's likely to be against the terms of service of a lot of websites. It may be costing people to provide that data and we want to be good digital citizens. It's also worth pointing out that the approach that we talk about in this video works with websites that give us a fully rendered HTML page. So it won't work if the website you're using uses React or Vue or Angular or any other JS framework. We'll look at that in the future video, which I'll link to up here. Is it there yet? With all that being said, let's get stuck in. This is Books to Scrape. It's a fictional bookstore that has loads of books in different categories. It's got pagination going on. In the categories, it has the name of the category and the books. For each book, we've got a price, we've got a rating, we have some product information and linked products. To be able to scrape well, it's great to dive in and find out the structure of the page. Let's look at the historical fiction section. We can see the genre here, historical fiction. We can see the category. We can see the list of results and the, the hint that it's been paginated. And we can see the books that are going on here and the link to pagination at the bottom. Now I'm gonna open up my inspector. And from my inspector, I'm able to press this button and hover over items and I can find out about them. I can see this title, this genre, historical fiction. In my tools over here, if I right click and copy, I can copy a selector path, which is going to help me find this programmatically. So I can use this on any page to be able to find this particular item. As I look through this page, I notice that quite rightly, there's only one H1 tag. So just finding a H1 here is going to be much more useful. So let's write some code that can extract the genre from this page. So the first thing I'll do is just copy the URL. I have an empty directory, so I'll initialize a new project. And the single library that I'm going to install to help me out here is called Cheerio, which is a library that allows me to parse HTML and be able to query it as if I would use CSS selectors, much like jQuery. With that done, I'll open up this directory in my code editor and create an index.js. So I'll import Cheerio and I will use that URL that I copied a few seconds ago. I'm going to create an async function called getGenre. It needs to be async because we need to query that URL, wait for the response, do some work and then get the data. I'll make sure I invoke this function at the bottom just so it's ready to go. I'll use the try catch and I'll console error on the error just so I can see that error if something goes wrong. So probably have better error handling, but for now that'll do fine. And then I will get a response. How will I get the response? I will await using fetch. Now fetch is built into Node since Node 16. So I don't need to install a third party library like Axios or Node fetch, it's ready to go. So I'll fetch the URL and I then want the data which is actually going to be the text that comes back from that response. So now I have the, a large string that represents the HTML that's been sent back from that URL. So I want to initialize Cheerio. And because JavaScript developers have been using dollar sign to represent jQuery for a long time, we'll stick with that. We'll say dollar sign equals Cheerio.load the data. Let's say take the string that we had over here and make it accessible. Now I'll get the genre and the genre is going to be either that really large selector string. So we'll, I will get that and see it's ID of default, a div inside of that, 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 a div which has a class of page, page header and action, and then a H1 inside of that. That's a really brittle selector, which as soon as the page structure changes at all, it's going to break. I'm going to trust that it's going to stay as a H1. So I'll just select the H1 instead. And I want to get the text from that. And then I'll console log that genre. 
In my terminal, I'll run my file node index.js and brilliant, I have managed to get the genre of the historical fiction. Well, that's great and all, but I probably want more than that. I'd like to get the title, the price, and whether or not it's in stock or out of stock, the availability of the book that's there. And if I look at these items again, I'll see that each of the books are contained, well, they're a list item. And I think, oh, can I use list items uniquely? Well, these are list items over here as well, so not really. But on this page, actually each book is an article and it's being defined as an article. And that's the only place on this page where articles being used is to describe a book, which is great. I want to collect the title. So inside of the article, I want to get the title, which is an A tag within H3 and the text of that, brilliant. I want the price. I look at the price then. What's unique about this? Well, it has a class of price underscore color. I can use that to be able to find that particular piece of data. And then the availability. Well, it has a class of availability. I can use that. I feel like I've got enough information. I know this page enough. I can start building together what I need. So I'm going to create an async function called get books. And that's going to start off largely the same as the get genre function. So I'm just going to copy all of that and bring it with me down here. So the first three lines are inside my try block are going to stay the same, but I want this to be my books. And I get my books not by getting the H1, but by, by getting article. All the articles now I will have available to me. Now I want to loop over those books and capture the data from each book. So I'll loop over the books using the each function, which will take a callback function. I'll then extract the title by doing dollar of this, the current object dot find. And if we remember it three a dot text, the price dollar this dot find. And that had a class of price underscore color. And we want the text from that and the stock. It's going to be dollar this dot find. And that had a class of availability text. Now that also has a bit of white space around it, so I can use dot trim to tidy that up. I then want to push this information into a data structure. So I'm going to create outside of my function a books data array. And inside of my loop, I'm going to say books data dot push. And I want to push an object with the title, the price, and the stock in. And finally, I'll log out the books data. Let's make sure I invoke my function and let's see that in action. Awesome, got my books ready to go. Amazing. So I've got great, the titles, the price, whether or not it's in stock for every book on that page in a data format without having to scroll through the page. Now, this is only 20 records. This has been paginated. If I look at the bottom, I can see there's a next button. If I inspect that, I can see it has a class of .next with an A inside it, which has a href, which is going to page two HTML. Page two HTML, that's interesting. So if I click on that and copy this link, let's compare it to the original. So if we see what we, the link in the href was just page two, the base URL then is everything but page two. If there is a next button, I want to re-invoke my function and call it on that new URL. And then once there's no next button, I want to log out the results. So let's put an if block in here. If, if when I use dollar on dot next, with an A, if the length of that is bigger than zero, so in other words, if the next button exists, then the next page URL is going to be base URL plus that same selector, but the attribute I want to grab from it is the href attribute. And then I'd like to re-invoke this function, get books with that next page URL. Well, that means I need to restructure this a little bit. So this needs to expect a URL on the way in, great. And then we'll need to pass in the initial URL here. And then we will stick our console log books data in an else block. And just to be sure, we'll print its length, which hopefully will be 26 when we're finished. Brilliant. 26 books. So we've collected the data, we've managed pagination, we've got all the information, but now we want to persist that data so that we can save it to a CSV file that we could import somewhere else. And to help with that, I'm going to use a library called JSON to CSV. So at the top here, I will get JSON to CP, and that's going to be require JSON to CSV. And I want a parser, dot parser. And I'm also going to want the file system. So require file system from node and specifically the promises version of that. 
So now rather than logging out this data, instead of that, I want to in create a new version of my parser. So JSON CSV parser. And I'll get the CSV by calling parser.parse. And I want to parse the books data. And lastly, I want to await fs.write file and I give the path books.csv and the data, which is the CSV, and then I'll console log all done. Let's try that. It says it's all done. Let's check if it is. Books.csv, and there we go. We have header row and then comma separated categories for the 26 entries that on that website. So with one external library that allows us to parse the HTML and one further to help us persist to um, comma separated variables, we are ready to go. So there we go, using Node to scrape websites, extract the data that we want and persist it to the file system. If you find this useful, please subscribe below. I hope to see you around here soon.